guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be working on creating a new manipulation. And in our first step we want to remove the water from the background of this image, leaving only the tree trunk and the driftwood remaining. Now you can use your pen tool, you can use your lasso tool, but really there are much easier steps when you have a background that has a solid image such as the water or the sky. Now to do this there are two ways to extract almost solid colors from your image and you can use a channel lookup method or you can use a color range method. So I'm going to start by showing you the color range first. Now something to know about these two, two options that neither are really perfect and you will have to adjust them slightly just to get them to work but it is so much easier than going around the objects if they have a lot of the little lines and branches and things like that okay so to do our color range we want to go to select and go to color range first actually let's duplicate that background by using a control j or a command j if you are a mac user we want to go to select and choose color range and you will see it will bring up a color range window and you will see a drop down menu. It has sample color, red, yellow, green, your RGB channels, highlights, shadows, and skin tones. I am not going to talk about any of these options in this video. We're only going to look at the image itself, our color pickers, and the fuzziness. So on this image, you can choose to either select the browns in the tree or the water in the background. I would suggest going with the water area in the background because it is a lot less work than going through and selecting just the tree. Now if you look on your color range window you will see that there's still a little bit of black dots and lines in the water. That's okay but you can adjust this a little further by using your fuzziness slider to bring that up. At the same time you will notice it's bringing back whites and grays into that foreground. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this back down. And now I'm going to choose the plus on the color picker, hold my shift key, and I'm going to go in and just select on the water background. Now it may still bring in some grays and whites into that foreground, into the rocks down here at the bottom, but that will not be so bad. We just want to make sure that we're getting as much as the white into the image as possible. From here, we're going to go ahead and select OK, and it will bring up our marching ants. You will see that there are still some marching ants going around the water, and even here on the tree branch, there is a little bit of marching ants in that. But that is a lot less than if you were going to be doing it any other way. Okay, so you can either choose from this point to do a copy, a new layer via copy, but then you will lose all of your details in the tree trunk. So what's the best option? It would be to use the masking layer. So let's go ahead and select that masking layer. I'm going to toggle off of that background so you can see what that looks like. If you do not do a control I or a command I when you are choosing that masking layer, you will see that it leaves all the detail in the water and even in the rocks in the front. That's okay though, just make sure your white tabs are around that masking layer and go ahead and hit control I now. Now you will see you have your tree back, but you will also see you have some water and you will have all of the rocks that have that white and even right here in this tree area, you will see those pixels coming through. So what you need to do is you want to grab a paintbrush want to have it set on a hardness. You do not want to soft round for this because you want to make sure that you bring everything back. Have your opacity at 100% in normal mode and you just want to grab your white paintbrush and start painting back in all those foreground objects. Now be really careful close to the edge. I'm going to go really quick just to get this all back in there. But when you get closer to the edges you just want to bring that size down and make sure you do not bring any water back. Now I accidentally went too far up here and I brought some water back. So I just want to hit X on my keyboard and if you look right here it changes my color options. I want to change that to a white. You can choose B for brush and I'm going to use my left bracket key to lower that size. Let's go to a black and let's start removing that color again. Now we have that hard round so we're going to make sure that all of our rock edges are very sharp. So use our left bracket key to go down a little bit smaller. And I'm not going to do any of this area right here 
at this exact moment because we're going to go really quick. But I want to come up here into the tree trunks to show you right here. What you want to do is have that white because we want to make sure that our tree trunk has all the detail left in it. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video, go around and do the entire area, and then when I'm completed, when it's completed, I will come back. Okay, so we've gone ahead and extracted that whole background, and now we just want to toggle off of this layer to hide that layer. We're going to bring that background layer back, and we're going to do a controller Command J to duplicate that background. We're going to go ahead and hide this background layer so it's not visible, and now we're going to do a channels extracting extraction. We want to go up and choose channels. As you can see, it'll bring up all your RGB channels. We want to click on our blue layer. This will bring only our blue layer active. You do not want to do a command or control J to duplicate this layer. You need to manually click and drag and slide this down to duplicate and make a blue layer copy. If you do a control or command J, it will come over here on your layers palette and duplicate the layer over here and you do not want that. So we have this new blue copy. We want to go to image adjustments and levels. You can do a curves, but I find that the levels is just as easy and just as quick. And we want to bring our shadows and make those darker and we want to make our highlights and make those brighter. We are just trying to get a black and white image from the sliders. Okay, so we are going to bring those midtones towards the, the highlights and just keep working at that. Now you'll notice that there are white in the rocks and a little bit of black left in the water and that is okay it's just like when we did that color range we're going to go ahead and choose okay and now we have that black and white image we're going to choose our magic wand the tolerance is set at 50 i'm going to go ahead and bring that up to about a 75 and we're going to choose in the blacks now when you choose in the blacks you are going to have your marching ants around all of the white down here it's going to be the exact same as that color range you're going to have to go back in and fill that in in a little bit okay so I did not talk about this with that color range option so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now you can do this with the color range or you can do this with the channels both it doesn't matter you can go in and do a select modify and feather and let's go ahead and feather that by about one and choose OK. It will soften those edges though, so if you have something that has a very, very sharp edge, you might not want to feather those edges. OK, from here what you want to do is you want to make sure this blue copy gets deleted, so simply click and drag it down to your trash can and make sure you go back over to your layers channel. Choose that background copy and we're going to just mask that off like we did before. As you can see, it has brought in a lot of the detail in the tree and have removed the rocks. So what you have to do, just like we did with that color range lookup, you need to grab that paintbrush and you want to start removing anything that you want to hide with that black paintbrush. Choose that X to switch that color and start bringing back any of the details you want to bring back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go around that very quickly and bring back anything we need to and then we will continue on. Okay now we have both of those image with all that background extracted and all the details brought back, brought back in the rocks in the tree so now I'm going to show you what happens with the edges when you use these two options. It's a little bit different than when you use your magic wand or I'm sorry if you use your lasso tool or your pen tool. So I just want to create a new layer by simply going down and clicking this button here and that will just bring in a new layer and I want to fill this layer with my paint bucket tool and I just want to have a darker gray you can choose a dark blue anything that will separate that background from the image so I'm going to go ahead and choose okay and fill that in with the paint bucket so let's go ahead and zoom in and look at the options as you can see there is a little white haloing around the, that tree trunk and it's the same thing on the color range except for it looks a little more jagged so Practice with those tools and see which one you like better. I am not really concerned about that line going around it because my background cloud layer that I'm going to add in is a little bit on the lighter side, so it should blend in right away. But if not, we are going to keep the masking layers available so we can go back and forth and touch those up if we need to. 
Okay, so now let's continue on. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and this top layer here, this top masking layer, because I'm only going to be using one of those. You don't have to delete it. I just wanted to make it easier. Now I want to target and look at just the masking layer itself for just a second. If you see here, we have our image layer with our white tabs around it. If I click my masking layer, the white tabs go around that. If you look in the middle, there is a linked chain. If you accidentally hit that, that chain will become, it will disappear. It will no longer be linked. You will not have your image layer and your masking layer linked. I'm going to show you what happens when you have that not linked together. If you move your masking layer or your image, it will not keep those two together. So I'm just going to go up and do step back to undo the moved. And we're going to link those together just by clicking in the middle. And now you can move the masking layer and the image layer together. Okay, so now I want to bring this into a custom size. I can change the canvas size on this if I'd like to, but I normally start with a new document. This is sized at a 16 by 24 with the 24 length being vertical. And I just wanna simply go back over to my tree trunk layer. I can drag that around. I'm going to click and drag it over top of the untitled one layer. Make sure you get that untitled one. And then when you see that plus sign appear, just simply release that and it's going to bring that into the image with that masking layer. So now I'm going to drag it down about to the bottom of the screen and you can see it's not perfect. If you wanna go ahead and resize that and sometimes if depending on what the item is, you can just stretch that out right now and not worry about the distortion too much if you're not stretching it out too far. You can also go ahead and bring that size up if you want it a little taller. So let's go ahead and move that around just a little bit. Go ahead and choose OK. And now I want to bring in a cloud background. OK, so now I have my sky overlay open. As you can see, it has an apartment in it and a tree in it. I shot this out of my window yesterday because I saw the sky and I thought it was really nice and that it would work for this composite. And I have other cloud overlays, but I think this one has a bit of a moody look to it. So I want to try to make this one work. So I just want to go ahead and hit Control J and that will duplicate my background layer. And I want to click and drag that over top of my untitled and then bring it down and drop and release that. Now it's going to come in and it's going to be over top of that background copy. And that's just because we did not select that background first. So we just want to click that new layer and drag that down. Now this is not a smart object. So you do not want to resize this until you've changed it into a smart object. So we just want to simply right click over top of that text layer and do a convert to smart object. Now, if you don't know why it's important to change this to a smart object, go in and watch that video on smart objects versus rasterized layers. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring that size up. And I'm just going to play around and see if I can get the size where I want it. And that looks pretty good right about there. I'm just going to bring that down just enough so the building is behind that image. And I'm not worried about the tree line just yet. I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. Now that I have that size placement and I know I'm not going to change it again, now I can rasterize this layer. I can also work on it as a smart object, but I want to use this layer as if it's a painting and I want to work directly on the layer. This is a destructive method. So if you do not want to do it this way, make sure you use your masking layer. So I'm going to right click and rasterize that layer. I'm going to grab my clone stamp brush. It is set really high right now and that's okay. I can just use my left bracket key to bring the size down. I'm going to hold my alt key click and now I'm just going to simply paint over top of that tree layer. It will duplicate a little bit of that sky so just be careful. Keep clicking that alt and moving that mouse around as you select to bring in the different areas. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and just brush out holding that alt key clicking and clone out that area. So now I want to blend this background in just a little bit more. So I want to use a Gaussian blur. I'm going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's bring this up to about five pixels. I'm going to turn my preview on and off to look at that before and after. That's not really enough. Let's go up to 25 pixels. And now you can really see it's starting to blur that out. Let's go to 15 pixels. 
that looks pretty good there. I'm going to go with 15 pixels and choose OK. And now we have our new cloud background in. But now you notice a lot more that you have that white haloing, that white line around that tree branch. So we're going to talk about that next. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at that tree trunk, that driftwood, and get that cleaned up. Now, the reason why I did not do this beforehand is because I wanted to see how it would look on that background. Sometimes if you have a very light background, this does not affect it as much as it would if you have a dark background. So we want to go up here to our masking layer, make sure those white tabs are around that masking layer, grab your magic wand tool. The tolerance is set at 75. This is really, you could have it at 50 or 35. You just want to make sure that your marching ants are going around the object that you wish to have removed. Okay, so now we want to go into to do a select and select inverse. So only the tree trunk is selected and the rocks. From here, you want to go up to select modify and contract. When you use your contract it brings those marching ants into the object. I'm going to go ahead and do this by 15 pixels just so you can see what it does. And now you see I'm going to zoom in. It has brought those marching ants into the tree trunk by 15 pixels. I'm going to undo this and now I'm going to go back in select modify contract and let's go by three pixels. And now you can see it's gone into the tree trunk only by three pixels. That's still a little bit too much. So let's just do it by two pixels. Modify feather, or not feather, sorry. Select, modify, contract, two pixels. And now what we want to do is we want to inverse this again. So we want to go to select, inverse, and now we are selecting all of the image that's not on the tree trunk. And from here we just want to simply click and get our paintbrush. Choose a black paintbrush. I always do this. I always have the wrong paint. I want to bring this size up so we can work really quickly and I'm just going to go over top of that entire tree line and remove that very quickly. And that's because that's a masking layer. And now if I zoom back in and deselect you will see that there is no white. It has removed that because we contracted those pixels. Okay, I think that looks really good. There are a few spots that still have issues like right here along the water line and that's just because I did not go through and mask that off very well and I can go back and work on that in a little bit. Okay, now we want to go ahead and save before we move on. Just make sure you're saving your files even though Photoshop has an auto recovery. You just want to make sure that you're saving as a PSD while you're processing and working on things just in case. So let's go ahead and save that. And we're just going to do a file save as and let's just type violin and blackbirds 2 and let's choose the PSD Photoshop file and we're just going to leave it on our desktop and choose save. We're going to go ahead and choose OK and now that has saved so we're good to go. You can also go up to Windows to your history panel and create a snapshot that's right here. So now anytime you need to go back to this exact moment it is right here in your history palette. All you have to do is click on that and it will bring you right back to this spot. Okay now let's go ahead and bring in that violin. So we're going to go to the violin image and we're going to have to extract this too. So I'm going to go ahead very quickly we're going to duplicate that blue channel we're going to go into image levels. We're going to bring up the brights, bring down into the blacks. Now this is a lot easier to do when you have this background that is solid white. Okay, we're going to go ahead. Now watch if you go too far into the blacks, it really pixelates those pixelates those lines. So just be very careful. Don't worry about the strings too much because we can go back in and grab those with a masking layer. Okay, let's go ahead and choose okay grab that magic wand tool. We're going to let's select just the white actually and we won't have to worry about those lines at all. Let's delete that blue copy, go back to our layer, grab a masking layer, control I to invert that and now you only have that violin. Let's select that so we can move that around and we're going to drag that all the way up to our new save layer and drop that into our image. I'm going to hold the shift key, grab my anchor on the right hand side or the left hand side and just bring that size down to about the same size that 
the tree trunk is because we're going to be doing a little bit of editing. Let's go ahead and turn that just a little bit. I'm going, I think that looks pretty good right there. Now on this one, if you notice, I left that a little bit higher than the tree trunk. I want to exaggerate that tree coming out of the ground and I'm going to do that by just bringing that violin up a little bit higher. I'm gonna rotate that just a little bit more and go ahead and choose okay. We can also drag this image behind the tree trunk layer and look and see how that looks on there. Now, if you notice there's a white line going around that image, that's just because of the masking layer. So let's go ahead and grab that black paintbrush, go in, let's bring that size down really small and you can just go in very quickly and clean up that white line. If you accidentally go into that, don't worry about it too much. You can either just undo that or switch back and forth between that white and black paintbrush. I am using my mouse today. I may switch over to the pen tablet here in a little while, but right now I'm just using my mouse. Okay, so now we have that cleaned up and we're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. Now on our next step, I wanna work on this violin a little bit better, get a little more color match and remove some of the white that's going around that. So let's go ahead and remove the white that's around that. We're going to select that violin. We're gonna choose that masking layer. We're going to do this the exact same way we did that tree trunk earlier, that driftwood. We're going to select around that image. We're going to go up and go to modify, contract, and let's go ahead and just contract that by two. Now, if you notice, we did not inverse that, so it did not go inwards. So what you can do, if you did not do that, you can do expand. So let's expand this by four, and now you can see that that has gone into that violin. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out. Now, because we're on that masking layer, we're going to have to grab that black paintbrush, and we're going to just simply go quickly over that whole area around that to remove that little white edge that we have. Okay, very quickly. And then we can deselect, so select, deselect, and now we've removed most of that white edges. If, you, if there's a little bit of highlight from the actual lighting on the edges of those violin pieces, but that's okay, that's not going to bother me too much. Okay, let's go ahead and balance this color a little bit and bring a color match for this image. So let's go in and grab a color balance, or actually let's do a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now, we have to make sure we clip this to that layer below it or it will apply it to every single thing below. So let's go ahead and clip that. And now I just wanna go in and remove a little bit of color to that overall violin. Let's go by a negative 20 and let's go up to our master slider and now choose our reds and bring down the saturation just a little bit more in just the red. And let's do that in the yellow. And now it's starting to take that real warm glow away from that. Okay, I wanna do a channel mixer. You can either do a color balance or a channel mixer adjustment layer. I'm going to do a channel mixer. As you can see, it brings up everything on your menu. You have your output channels of red, green, and blue. I'm gonna start with my red. We do not wanna choose monochrome because it will just change it to a black and white image. I'm going to clip that to the layer below it. And let's go ahead and remove a little bit of red by going left on our slider. And as you can see, if I go too far, it leaves all the blue and the green. So just go really carefully and really slow and just get it to match as close as possible. And now I wanna add just a touch of blue. And I think I like that right about there. Let's go into our green and we're going to remove just a little bit of green, not too much, just maybe one pick percent. Maybe 3%. That looks pretty good there. There's still a little bit of magenta. If you're not comfortable using that channel mixer, go ahead and do that color balance. That'll bring up the midtones, shadows, and highlights. I'm going to start with my midtones always, and we're going to go a little bit into the green and a little bit into the blue. Make sure you clip that so it only targets the violin. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a cast on that, but I'm not too worried about that. We can always go back and adjust that later. Okay, so now I wanna hold my shift key, select all the way down to my violin layer, grab all of those layers together. We're gonna to go to new group from layer and we're just going to type violin and we're gonna keep all the coloring and all the violin 
all in that layer together. And now we're simply going to click and drag that down below that driftwood layer. And that way that driftwood is on top because we want that wood grain to show up over top of our violin. So let's go ahead and start working on our actual driftwood and getting that shaped right in to blend in together. Okay guys, in our next step I want to go ahead and I want to use the Puppet Warp to manipulate that driftwood to make it work a little bit better with that violin. Now to do that we can use the Puppet Warp tool directly on this layer mask because it has that linked layer mask that will allow us to do that. However, for this occasion I'm going to go ahead and apply the layer mask so I can work directly on that layer and I just want to right click in the middle of those two layers and choose apply layer mask and now we have just our driftwood on a layer by itself. So now I want to go in and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see what's going on and I think I want to go ahead and get rid of this stick here and just go ahead and move it over to the side so we can only have the two main pieces that are already in the shape of a violin coming up. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab my lasso tool and then I want to go around this section of the log and I want to create this on a new layer. I don't want to delete this. I want to save it in case I need it layer, later. So I'm just going to go to new layer via copy and then we're going to toggle that off so we don't have to see it. We're going to go back to that driftwood layer and then we're going to delete this section. And I could have just did a reselect but it's just as easy to do it this way as well. And I'm just going to simply delete that. And what we have is we have that log still and we can move that around and oops and we can get that out of the way but we can use that later if we want it for something else somewhere else on the image. So let's go ahead and choose OK. Let's go back to that driftwood layer and now let's get rid of the portion in the center that attaches to this. So we want to do a close lasso keeping that round look. Let's go ahead and do a new layer via copy so we can have that copy there. I'm going to go ahead and do a move for this and get that out of the way. And that's just an extra piece of wood we can use later. I'm going to go back to this. We can go ahead and just select around this again. Grab that lasso tool and go pretty close. And just remove this extra piece. And I'm just going to delete that. We're not going to use a layer mask for this. I'm just going to get that out of the way. So now we have that piece of driftwood all by itself and these extra pieces over here if we need them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to that puppet warp. I'm going to duplicate my driftwood layer just so we have that background copy in case we need to go back. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can see a little closer what's going on. And now I'm going to go up and choose my puppet warp tool. I selected the wrong one. Puppet warp. And then what it's going to bring a grid up over top of your image. Now up here on the top you'll see your layer modes. You'll see normal, rigid, and distort. You'll also see your density of normal, fewer points, or more points, and expansion, show mesh, and then a couple of other things. I always want my mesh to show because I like to see where the joints are in the objects. I'm going to go ahead and add more points onto my grid and this just helps me personally get this to move more smoothly. Now there are many ways to use this and I'm sure a lot of people use this differently but I like to do a couple things. Now if I only want this area to move I will lay down about three points on the bottom. This will lock this area into place. I can also lock one in here and now what I want to do is I want to go through and follow along the curve and just place some pinpoints here and there to get them to move. Now at this point if I want to move this area right here I can start to move that over. If I come up here and I add a couple pins here and here and I try to go back down here it's going to distort that and try to pull just the middle but locking this in place. So I always try to add a couple pins and then move them along the way. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and delete these pins by just right clicking over top of the pin and we're going to delete those and I'm going down at the bottom and I'm going to start moving this pin here out just a little bit 
and we're just going to slowly move this over. Now, if you get some movement over here, you can lock this into place as well, but I don't think that's really necessary. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit there, and now I'm going to start pulling it back in to give it a little bit more of a curve. And now I'm gonna come up here and add another pin here. And then add another pin. And I'm not worried so much about this space here. I can go in and fill in with extra wood in other locations to get that to work. Okay, now I'm gonna to go to this side and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just warp this out just a little bit. And I'm gonna bring one up here and warp this one out over here. I really wanna follow along the lines of the basic look. So let's go ahead and choose okay. And we're going to zoom out and see how that looks. Now I did that pretty quickly, so it looks a little rough and distorted. I don't really like that so much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, delete that top layer. I'm going to duplicate that again, hide that background. And now I'm going to go, going to go much slower and get these pins exactly where I want them and get that curve going a little bit better. So I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to go through and do the exact same thing, but I'm just going to do it a little more detailed and a little closer. Okay, so I warped this left side just a little bit to give it a little bit more curve to the left, but what I wanna do is I wanna go in and I wanna start filling this area in and bringing this up just a little bit. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab my lasso tool. I wanna go around and down into this portion here and then back up and across. I wanna go to filter, select modify feather, and let's go ahead and feather that about 10. I really do want a really soft edge and I wanna go ahead and choose okay. New layer via copy. And now we have this new layer here. You can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right back where it belongs by going to undo and move. And now I'm going to simply click and pull up and start to grow that tree a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the warp option and I'm going to warp this to the center just a little bit more. I really want to pull that wood up and create that shape. Okay, let's go ahead and warp this down so it'll wrap right up against that area there. Okay, gonna go ahead and choose okay. And now you can see, I'm gonna click off, it has warped and given a little bit more shape to that area of the violin. So let's go ahead and click that driftwood again. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two sections together by holding my shift key, selecting that copy, right click and merging those layers. So now that is all together. And I wanna go ahead and do the same thing again, except for this time so we don't have to go up and do the select modify feather. I'm going to add my feather right here. I'm just gonna choose 10 and anything I select now will automatically have that feather. I'm gonna go right over here into this section and I'm going to just do a little round rough selection here and do a new layer via copy again. And now we're going to move this over. I'm going to turn it just a little bit. Let's go ahead and warp it so we change that pattern up just a little. And we want the grain of the wood all to be going in the same direction. So go ahead and choose okay. I'm gonna slide this one behind that area. I'm gonna grab that area of the driftwood, the one on top, I'm gonna grab a soft round. I'm going to bring it very small. Make sure it's a soft round. That's a good size there. And now I'm going to just roughly go along the edge and sort of blend that section in together a little bit more. We will go in and we'll remove a little bit of this in a little while. Let's go ahead and duplicate the same area of that section. We're going to click that, oops. I moved the wrong one, go to undo. If this layer moves a lot for you, go ahead and lock that in place and you will not keep clicking that. Because we have our auto select and our show transform select, we do not have to keep going over to that layer palette. Okay, I'm gonna move this piece of wood and let's go ahead and bring that up here and let's flip it so we get a different pattern. Transform, flip horizontally. Let's rotate that and let's bring that size up just a little bit, choose okay. That looks really good. That's going to blend in really nice together. Let's go ahead and erase that just a little bit. I like that. Let's drag that behind there just a little bit more. That looks good. 
this is all about preference and taste too so like you really can't do anything wrong with this section because it's really just playing around and getting things into place okay now let's go ahead and look at this piece of wood here let's go ahead and add that to this section here I want to go ahead and rotate that around let's bring that in let's bring the size up I'm going to use a warp and just warp that just a little bit into place I'm going to go ahead and choose OK I'm going to drag that behind I keep double clicking sorry I'm going to drag that behind that driftwood layer and as you can see it's not really blended in with really well together so what we're going to do is we're going to grab that driftwood layer unlock it grab our soft round erase and we're going to just blend that in a little bit better together but with our soft round eraser now a lot of people might want to use a masking layer to do this and if you're more comfortable doing that then by all means do that okay let's go ahead and select that little layer again I want to go up to edit transform and warp and we're going to just change that pattern just a little bit to make it go a little bit more with the grain of the wood that's already there okay I'm going to continue on and I'm going to fill the whole front of the violin with wood I'm going to pause this though so you do not have to watch it the whole way through okay so I've gone ahead and I've added all the wood that I wanted to add in and in some areas the violin is still left remaining on that natural wood and that's okay and if you look in our right hand in our layers panel you can see all the different layers that we added with the little chunks of wood here and there now you can choose at this point to merge all of these layers together or work on each of those layers of wood separately and blend those in together a little bit more now if I was doing this for myself on my own I would take a little more time and do a little more blend I would start working with the lighting a little bit more to get these darks and lights just blended in a little bit better together but for this occasion for just the video I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers together and we're going to start getting these to blend in just a little bit more so now to do this I am going to go ahead and do a mask for this layer and this is just because I want to be able to go back and forth and change anything if I need to now I was thinking about the violin and how it looks and I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean by this I'm going to, going to lower this opacity down to 4% so you can just see through the image and see what it looks like I love the curves and the carvings that are within the violin I love the shape of the violin so I really want to bring some of that back through to my image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that up to about 40% so I can still see everything that's behind it but be able to see the actual shape so now I'm going to grab my paintbrush and I'm going to go in with my black paintbrush I'm going to bring that size down this is that this does have a hardness so I'm going to bring this down to about 40% 49% hardness so the edges are a little bit sharp but not too much and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start making sure that we're bringing the shape of that violin through now at the top you'll see that I'm not removing the top pieces of wood it's because I want to give that appearance that the wood has grown past that violin okay so there's that area there I'm going to go ahead and click right here and change that a little bit as well now I'm going to bring my size down even smaller and I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean this area up right here now this takes a little bit more patience and we might have to change the brush size up just a little bit and go back and forth okay so that's looking really good you might not be able to see on my screen but I know it is removing with that mask and cleaning that wood off the top there okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring the opacity back up on that wood layer so now you can see that the shape of the wood is there and the image is coming through there okay I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit more make sure it's dark enough okay that looks pretty good there right there needs to be cleaned up a little bit more this is very difficult to get really close you just have to take your time we missed a little spot on the edge there okay so now I want to go ahead and bring that size up but I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 35 percent I'm going to bring the opacity down on the layer palette and I'm going to start removing a little bit of the wood that's over top of the black 
piece of the violin. And as you can tell, I'm not familiar with the dynamics of a violin or what things are called. I'm going to bring that size down with my left bracket key even smaller and I'm going to go in and just go right over top of the violin chords and bring those through. And this just takes a little bit of time to do that. And you might have to switch back and forth with your color to make sure you're getting that actual color. Now we're going to bring this up 50% and look at that and see how that looks. I actually like those chords coming through just a little bit. I'm going to bring my size up a little bit and I'm going to start brushing back away and bringing back in a little bit more. Let's bring the opacity down a little bit and let's bring in this piece right here of the violin. And the more you go over this, because we have that lower opacity here, the more will show through. Okay, let's go down and let's just bring a little bit of that shape down in here. Okay, I like that. Let's bring the size up a little bit more. Hit that one or two more times. Make sure we have that completely gone over. Now you can see here there's a little bit still over top of that. So let's go over that again. Let's bring that opacity up to 40% and just kind of brush that off. Okay, I like that overall. Now I want to go ahead and bring that opacity down to just 11%, bring the size up, and I'm just going to start brushing right off of that violin layer. And this is all to taste. So I want the wood to be very in focus down here, and then I want to start to blend it in a little bit more at the top. And I'm going to go ahead, I think, and remove this extra piece of wood that's coming over top. So let's go ahead and go to 100% opacity and go around and remove that. And this is to taste. Like I said, you can go back and forth. You might change your mind halfway through the design and decide you want to do something else. Okay, let's bring that size back up. Let's bring that opacity down to about 18% and just click on it a couple more times. Here and there, we're just going to blend that in together and I'm, I'm really liking that just the way it is. So let's go ahead and zoom out and look at that overall. There's a little bit of a weird distortion in shape right here. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that now. Okay, before we go in and fix this little area here, I wanna go in and apply that layer mask. And now we have our wood directly on a layer by itself. You can see that by toggling off of your violin layer. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that violin back on though. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to select this area here. I'm going to have this feathered by 10, as you can see, it's still available in our feather up here. I'm going to go to new layer via copy and I just want to do this over top so we don't have to fill in any gaps. Transfer, transform and warp. And we're just going to bring that shape out and just fill in that area just a little bit so it just has a more smooth line. We're gonna go ahead and choose okay. It's still a little strange right there so let's go ahead and reselect that again. And go in and go to transform and warp again and let's just make it have that curve there. That looks much better. Okay, let's go in, grab our eraser and bring our opacity down to about 39% and let's just blend those two sections together better. Okay, I like that overall, it looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna merge those layers together, hold the shift key, select layer one, right click and merge those layers together. And now we're going to start working on lighting and making this wood look a little better. Okay, and my first thing I wanna do before I add a little bit of color into this is I want to grab my magic wand and I want to select the area around the wood and now I'm going to create a new layer and do a select inverse and now we will only be painting within this section now you can paint directly on that layer but it is a destructive method and now I have a new layer what I want to do is I want to grab my paintbrush I'm going to set the mode to normal it's at 20 percent and I'm going to choose with my color picker a dark brown from inside of the wood that's already there. Now if that's too dark just slide around until you find a color that will look pretty good painting over top of this section. And that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to just simply paint over 
that area. It is at a 20% opacity, so you may not see right away what is happening. And I'm going to do a little bit up here just to kind of blend that in a little bit together. Now once you have this area and you've painted it in, what you can do is you can come over here on your layer palette in your modes and you can drop down and change this to an overlay mode and you can see it really brings those colors out and just kind of blends them in just a little bit more together. Now if that's too strong, you can always bring that opacity down just a little bit. You can also try a soft light mode. That looks pretty good there. Soft light looks really good. Let's duplicate this layer to make it twice as strong. Now this is too strong, but I do like the color that is happening there. So I'm just going to lower the opacity on that layer. So now I'm going to do a deselect and we're going to look at that overall. I'm going to select both of those layers by holding the shift key, right click and merge those layers. And I'm going to toggle on and off so you can see that before and after we've once you merge those layers together, you have to go back in and make sure you choose soft light. Okay, now let's toggle those on and off. I like that. So let's go ahead and hold the shift key, select that wood, and merge that together. And this just helps keep that layer palette clean. And you can see all that's going on there with that. Okay, so that looks really good there. I don't want to do anything else to match the wood color. I don't like this duplicate piece of wood here, so I'm just going to select on that driftwood. I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm just going to erase it completely from the selection, but I have to go up to 100% opacity. And we're just going to erase that completely. I am doing that pretty quick. But there is that. Okay, now let's continue on. Okay, so on our next step before we move on to doing our color blending and all of our lighting, I want to go ahead and add the birds in. So I'm just going to click and drag these in. I've already cut out most of them, so you do not have to sit and watch me do that again. And we just want to click and drag until the highlight comes up over top of our layer. There we go. And when the plus sign appears, you just release that and go ahead and choose OK and we're going to hold that shift key and bring that size down and get that all placed in. Now don't worry about those rough edges. We left those there because we just wanted to hurry up and get them cut out and brought into the scene. OK, let's go ahead and bring in our next bird. And these are not the best birds. I took them out of my apartment window the other day as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get that one sized in there. This does not have to be perfect. You just want to get it all laid out and placed in there. Okay. And let's find that last bird. There it is. And we just want to click and bring that in and drop that in there. And let's go ahead and resize that. Now I should have gone ahead and converted those to smart objects first, but for time, I am just quickly going through and doing this. Okay, I kind of want this one to be like it's sitting up on that twig there. And that looks pretty good there. So now I want to go in and just finish and go around and clean up around the birds and just get those clean. So I'm going to pause the video to do that. Now with the birds cleaned up, I want to go ahead with my shift key, select all three of the bird layers, do a drop down menu and choose new group from layer. And let's just rename that birds. And we just want to have that where it's cleaned up. We can also get rid of this extra driftwood layer because we're finished with this and we can rename this one driftwood. And now we have everything separated on our layers and we can continue on and do a little lighting and get everything blended in much better. Now one of the first things I like to do when I'm doing a color is I like to create a new layer and fill it with a deep, deep dark blue and use an exclusion overlay mode just to see how that works and how that looks. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll fill that in with our paintbrush and let's drop down and choose exclusion and just look at that overall. Let's toggle on and off. I kind of like that. It brings a little too much purple, I think, into the image. You can also adjust your opacity, but I think I really want to try something different. So let's go ahead and delete this layer and let's do a gradient. So let's do a new layer, a new fill layer gradient and choose OK. Now we want to drop down on our gradient and I want to choose this purple and orange here. And let's go ahead and choose OK. Now let's go in and do a 
Let's bring the size up just a little bit and we can also move this around on our screen with our mouse. Let's do a reverse. Let's bring that down and let's go ahead and choose OK. Drop down and choose soft light. Let's go and look at overlay. Let's go ahead and bring down that opacity to about 48% and we'll just get the overall look and see how we like that as we play around with that. Okay, let's go with a lighten. I really like the lighten. I love how that mutes out those colors, but they're still a little bit strong, so let's reduce those a little bit further. Let's toggle on and off and look at that. I actually really like that a lot. Now, if you find that the purple or the orange is going too high up, you can double click on that, and with your mouse, you can move those coloring down just a little bit. You can also change the style to be radial so you'll have a radial in the center. A diamond actually looks good sometimes. It'll help break up that coloring a little bit. If you do a reverse, you just have to really play with it and see really what you like best and how it ends up playing out on the photo. Okay, let's go with a diamond at 200% with that blue towards the center. And let's go ahead and choose OK and see how we like that. Let's toggle on and off. I kind of like what it's doing there. Let's bring this down to about 20%. We can also go in with our gradient, grab a black brush, bring it to a very large size. And we can brush off just the top so the bottom remains. Let's bring that opacity up and reduce that at the top. Okay, I really like that, so I'm going to leave that there and have that as a gradient fill there. And let's move on to our next coloring and let's add some shadowing to the driftwood where the crows are. Okay, let's go ahead and work on shadowing and blending the birds in just a little bit more. Now there are a lot of different ways you can do shadows and as long as you are tricking the eye and getting it to look how you want, you should not overthink this or overstress too much about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this bird layer. This is the bird we're going to work on first, so I'm going to go below that layer, click on a new layer. So this shadow will go with this bird. I already have a black selected. Actually, it's a blue. Let's go straight to black and select that black. Let's go with a soft round. Let's bring that size down really small. We want to start out, let's go with a about a 30 or 25 percent. And now let's just go ahead and paint in directly under that bird. We're going to reduce the sides even further and make sure we get right next to where the feet would be. We're, that will be the darkest point and we're just going to raise the size up and just blend this in and just make this go along and get that to blend rather well. Okay, I like that overall. It really is that simple to do it just like that. You can also do a dark in color or a dodge and burn, but I don't really find that necessary. Now what I want to do is I want to click on the bird since we're down here and I'm going to add a little bit of blur to the ends of his wings just to blend those in just a little bit more. I'm going to bring the strength up to 100% and we're just going to blend, blend, blend right along those layers. Now, something else you can do if you want to give his wings movement, you can duplicate this bird layer. Now we have two. I'm going to go and use the one directly on top. I'm going to go to filter, blur, and use a motion blur. I'm going to change the direction of the blur and now we need to change the distance with the pixels to make his wings look like they're in motion. Now if you do a direction, if I do this direction his wings look like he's going, he's landing. If I do this direction here, it'll look like he's actually trying to take off a little bit. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit more. That's a little too much. You just want to give the appearance. I really like that right there, so let's go ahead and choose OK. Now let's grab an eraser. Let's bring the opacity down to about 75%. And let's just erase on the front side and where the beak would be to make him stand a little bit more still while his wings are still in movement. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out and look at that. I like that a lot right there. That actually looks really good. 
we could do a little bit more of a shadow. Let's go back to that layer. This is our shadow layer here, and let's add a, just a little bit more shadow in. I'm going to bring it a little bit larger and bring it out a little bit more. I really like that. Let's go ahead and let's do the driftwood and violin. So what I want to do is I want to go to my cloud layer. Nope, I want to go to my driftwood layer. I apologize about that. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and rename this shadow violin. And that way I am adding it on top. It's at 25% that black and let's go ahead and just touch along the ends and the bottoms and darken that up a little bit. Now we're going to go a little bit farther away and we're going to just add a little bit more coming out from away from that. Now up close to it you can get a little bit smaller and go underneath all those wood pieces and start to darken those up. If you have a paint pen or a tablet, I would recommend you using that to just blend that in a little smoother. Right now I'm just using my mouse still. Okay, I really like that. Let's go on and let's add in the next bird here. We're going to toggle back onto that bird and we'll add this bird in. Now this bird is more in the foreground as if it's flying into the scene. So it can be a little bit larger. To increase that size, just simply hold that shift key and bring up or down that anchor point to change the size for that foreground element. Now you can leave this a little more in focus or you can blur this out. Let's go ahead and choose OK. Duplicate this layer and let's start with a motion blur. So let's go to filter, blur, and motion blur. And let's change the direction of that motion blur. I want it to go more in the direction that the bird is flying. OK, let's look at that. Let's change that just a little bit. Every angle that you change it at will change it up just a little bit. Okay, I like it right about there. I'm going to leave it like that. Go ahead and choose OK. I'm going to grab my eraser tool again and I'm going to erase just along the front side of the bird and leave the back side of his feathers alone. And this is just a little trick I do. Okay, I really like that right there. I don't really need to put a shadow below him because he is in front of the camera and flying into that scene. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the third bird. Okay, let's work on this last bird. I've gone ahead and zoomed into the image. The lighting is coming in from the right and in, so it works really well that the light is hitting the violin on this side and the bird as well. But I wanna go ahead and add a little shadow under his feet, so I'm gonna create a new layer, make sure it's underneath my bird layer, grab my paintbrush, it's at 15% opacity, the size is pretty strong or small and I'm going to just paint directly onto that violin piece, onto that layer above the violin piece to blend in the feet of the bird just a little bit more. Now if you feel like your bird's highlights are too strong, click on that top layer, click the lock pixel layer here which is this little grid. We're going to bring the size up on that and we're going to lightly paint over top of that. Let's go and paint along the back side of him and this will only target and paint on the back side of the bird or on the bird itself not the pixels around it because we did that lock pixel layer and we are just going to lighten or darken those highlights up just a little bit okay I really like that that looks pretty good there let's do the feet a little bit more Okay, now I want to add in a ruby into the bird's mouth. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. Now this is not going to be perfect. I'm going to go pretty quick on this. Let's go ahead and erase this little piece right here that we got brought in with it. Okay, so we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to rename this ruby. I'm going to drag it below the bird layer. I'm going to grab Grab that elliptical marquee tool. It's set at a zero feather. We do not want any feather. We're going to hold our shift key and create a small circle on our screen. And now we're going to grab a gradient tool here. Let's go ahead and change the colors. So let's go ahead and select here. Grab the white and the black gradient. We're going to leave this one black and we're going to change this one, the white one, to a deeper red color. From here, we're going to choose OK. It's set at a round gradient here. And we're just going to select inside of this circle and go from one side to the other. 
and it may take a second to get exactly the look we want. Let's do an opposite color. So now choose the diamond. Now let's go back and choose the radiant or the, the circle gradient and let's do a reverse. Sometimes you just have to play around with it until you figure out exactly the look you want to have with it. And if you select small areas within there, it will change the overall shape of that gradient. Okay, actually I like that one right there. So let's go ahead and click that and let's move that behind the bird. We're going to reduce the size. We can use our arrow keys and go up and down to move that. Let's go ahead and choose the check mark and deselect so we can look at that overall. I like that. When we moved it, it did leave that little bit of a leftover from that gradient. So let's go ahead and just erase that. That looks really good there. It's not super bright like a ruby would be. So what I want to do is I want to grab my paintbrush tool. I want to grab a white. I want to lower the size down to fit right about there in this shape. Let's bring that color up and let's click directly over top of there and that adds a little bit of a highlight. Let's undo that and make it a little smaller. Let's actually go with a really, really brighter red instead of a white and let's click that and see how that looks. Try to pay attention to where you're placing that. Let's lock that layer palette so it only adds it directly on top of that and let's click again. That looks really good there. I like how that's coming in from the highlight and the light is coming in from that side. Okay, but that still really doesn't have any shapes or a look of a ruby. So let's go ahead and add that ruby shape and look. Okay, let's add that jewel. I already have my jewels open here on my Photoshop file. Now this isn't the best selection, but it will give me that overall look. I wanna just grab my lasso tool and I wanna select, let's just choose this area here. I'm going to go to new layer via copy so it's on a layer by itself. It does have that 10% or that 10 pixel feather which is fine around it. Now I'm going to just simply click and drag that over and bring it in and drop it over top of that layer. Now we're going to need to reduce the size. We're only really using this for the shape and we're going to go in choose OK. Don't worry about those rough edges. We're going to go in and choose screen and let's get that placed in there. Okay, let's go ahead and choose OK. Let's grab our eraser tool. Let's reduce the size and now we're going to go in and erase around that and just clean those edges up just a little bit. You may need to bring your opacity up to 100% to go around this area and then we'll reduce the opacity again. Okay, now let's go back in, bring that opacity down and we're going to start cleaning up those edges and blending them in just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and nudge this with our keyboard arrow over just a little bit. Let's bring the size up just a little bit more. I really wanted to cover that whole area. Okay, let's grab our eraser again and just feather that in and blend that in together. Now on this side, it's much stronger than on the front side. So what we want to do is we want to bring that opacity. Let's start at about 20%, 17%. We're going to bring the size up and we're just going to click on that back side and we're going to just blend that in together and remove that. Now you're thinking it's still a little white, correct? So what we want to do is we're going to go up to image adjustments we're going to go to hue and saturation. We're going to move this over. We're going to choose colorize. And now you can change that to have any tint of a color that you need. So if we want it green, we can have it a little green. If we want it orange, we can have it orange, blue, everything you can imagine. But we want it red, so we're going to just go with red. We can bring the saturation up if we want to, so it'll be even darker. But I actually like that right there, so let's go ahead and choose OK. And let's drag that down on top of that layer, on top of the ruby layer. We're going to hold the shift key, select that ruby layer, right click and merge. Now let's go in and just clean that up just a little bit more to blend that in a little bit better. Let's go to our paintbrush tool. Let's bring that opacity to about 20%, switch to that black. 
And now I'm going to go in right along the bird's beak and just darken that area because the bird holds it between its beak. So it would have a darker area inside there. Let's make sure we have a black selected and a brown. Okay. If you notice, I just painted onto the background. So let's go to undo, step back. And the reason why it did that is because we did not lock those pixels there. So now let's go in and paint and it will only paint on the pixels where the bird is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and clean that up just a little bit and then we'll come back. Okay, now I really want to add a little bit more to that ruby. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to drop down and change this to an overlay mode. And as you can tell, it just really makes that a deep dark ruby color. From here, I want to duplicate that layer or I want to add a new layer. I'm sorry. And when I change back over to this ruby red color, I'm going to grab my paintbrush. I'm going to bring the size up and I'm going to just paint directly over top of that. And now I have a really glowing red color over top of that ruby but it still looks like it's not highlighting on the beak of that bird so let's try to bring it in front of that bird and now if you look at that it's making even the bird's beak glow but it's still not looking super realistic so what can we do let's go to that top layer or that bird layer let's have those pixels locked so now they're locked so if we paint it will only paint onto the bird let's grab a paintbrush tool let's bring that size down very small Let's bring the opacity down pretty small and let's paint right along the edge of that bird mouth and it will just really add a really thick glow, a highlight glow to that bird. But if you think about a bird in the glow, it's also going to blur. So let's bring down to about 4% opacity and let's paint right here on the bird too because he's going to have a bird that glow right there. And he might even have a little bit of a glow in his eye. So let's paint just a little bit into the eye as well. And now he looks like a really crazy, creepy bird. Let's go ahead and zoom out and look at that. I like that. That is pretty awesome there. And let's go ahead and do some last finishing touches on the entire coloring. Okay, let's add a little bit of shadow to the left side of the violin. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. We're going to select the violin and we're going to do directly on the image, not the masking, the actual image. I'm going to grab my paintbrush. We can either choose to burn this or paint directly on top of this. So I'm going to paint directly on top with a 15% opacity with my color mode set to darken with a black paintbrush. And now I'm just going to paint along and around the edges of this image. And I am using my mouse, so we're just going to go really slow and paint along that. If you pick up weird lines here and there, don't worry about it. We'll just go in and erase those in a minute. I want to soften the highlight on this side of the violin. So we're just going to go and go around that. Just really want to add a little bit of shape and dimension to the overall violin. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out and look at that. And I'll clean up that bottom edge. Now I want to unlock that cloud layer and let's darken the sky up just a little bit. I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer and lock that to that layer and we're just going to simply click right about here in our tones and just drag down just a little bit and really darken that sky up. Let's go up here into our light colors and darken that up just a little bit as well. I like that. Let's go ahead and leave it right there. Now what I want to do is I want to add just a tiny bit of a vignette. So I want to go above this layer. I'm going to create a new layer. Now I can do a gradient fill to this, but I really, for this particular image, I don't want to do it that way. I want to just grab my paintbrush. I want to bring the size up pretty large. I'm going to bring the opacity up to about 64%. And we're just going to paint along the edges. Now this is going to be extremely strong, but we're going to lower the opacity down. So let's go ahead and let's come over here and let's lower the opacity down to about 30. Let's go 40%. Let's go ahead and paint a little bit on this side. Let's go ahead and bring that size down a little bit more. Now you also could have used the method that I normally use with creating that elliptical tool. 
but on this occasion I really just want to target just certain areas and bring your eye in just a little bit more so I'm going to do it this way okay I'm really liking that there's no right or wrong way to do this we're gonna bring the size up really large okay let's toggle on and off and look at that I like that I kind of like how it's a little chunkier and it's not uniform okay I think overall that I really like how this image looks and I'm going to stop right there I hope you enjoy